Hey everyone, today we are going to solve equations with variables on both sides. So take out your lesson worksheet if you have a copy. If not, grab a sheet of loose leaf paper, a pencil, and maybe a calculator so you can copy down the examples as we go through the lesson. Let's get started. Here's the problem. Solve this equation and check your solution. 10x minus 19 equals 6x plus 19. All right, so let's notice that we have a variable on the left side of the equation and the right side of the equation. That's something new. Normally, our variables are only on one side or the other. So that's why this is called solving equations with variables on both sides. It means both sides of the equal sign, right? Variable on the left and a variable on the right. Okay, let's go through our steps and get started. First thing we want to do when we have variables on both sides of an equation is we want to get those variables together on one side. And to do that, we are going to add or subtract if we want to move terms across the equal sign. So I can't just say 10x plus 6x is 16x, right? We can't do that because they're not on the same side of the equal sign. So it's a matter of canceling one out. I can either move the 10x over to the right or I can move the 6x over to the left. I prefer my variables to be on the left side, so I usually cancel whatever's on the right side if I can. Since this is a positive 6x, I would subtract 6x on each side. 10x minus 6x gives me 4x minus 19, and then on the right side, I bring down my 19. Okay, next step. We're going to solve a two-step equation. So this is easy because you've been solving two-step equations for a long time now. So we're going to add 19 on each side. And that's going to leave us with 4x on the left side and 38 on the right side. Our last step is going to be to divide by 4. And that's going to leave me with x equals 9.5, right? Now that can be a little scary for some people because it's a decimal, but that's okay. It is perfectly normal to end up with a decimal as an answer to your equation. Last step now. We have to check it. Now when we check it, right, we are going to use substitution. You're not going to go back and look at your work and make sure that you didn't make an addition mistake somewhere. You are actually going to substitute this value of 9.5 into the original equation. So I'm going to put a 9.5 everywhere that I see an x. So I'm going to do 10 times 9.5 minus 19 on the left side. And then on the right side, I'm going to do 6 times 9.5 plus 19. And what we want to happen is we want the answer to be the same on both sides of the equal sign. That's how we're going to know that we have the correct answer. 10 times 9.5 is 95 minus 19. And when I do 95 minus 19, I get 76 on the left side. On the right side, I'm going to do 6 times 9.5, and this is where your calculator might be a little handy. Not that you can't do that in your, in your head or on paper, I'm sure you can. But 6 times 9.5 is 57, and 57 plus 19 is 76. So do you see how we have 76 on both sides of the equal sign? That's how I know for sure that the answer is 9.5, and we have the correct answer. Let's move on. All right, we have more examples here. Now, if you're feeling confident and you feel like you understand the lesson already and you want to stop the video and try to solve one of these problems or two of them or three of them or even all of them, go ahead and do that right now. And then you can just press play when you're finished and check the answers with me. If not, just keep watching the video and you can follow along as I do more examples. Okay, for this example, now this one is a little bit of a unique situation because I was telling you before that you can move either variable to get them together. But in this case, we really shouldn't move the 17x. And the reason for that is because 17x is on the left side of the equal sign all by itself. And if I were to cancel it, I wouldn't have anything left here, right? So whenever you have a term that's alone, right, I always explain to my students, 17x is here, he's all by himself, he's alone, he's very sad, so we're going to bring him a friend. This is his friend 11x. 
Now, if I want to bring 11x over, I'm going to subtract it because this is plus 11x and I have to do the opposite. 17x minus 11x is going to be 6x on the left equals 78 on the right. From here, one stepper this time, we're just going to um, divide by 6, and that's going to give me x equals 13 as my answer. Okay, now I'm going to check it, right? It's very important that we continue to check our answers. So I'm going to take this value of 13 and I'm going to place it into this equation everywhere that I see an x. So on the left side, I'm going to do 17 times 13. And on the right side, I'm going to do 78 plus 11 times 13. And we're going to see what happens here. So again, you might want to break out this calculator now, but 17 times 13 is 221 on the left side. And then on the right side, I'm going to bring down that 78 for now. And when I do 11 times 13, that's going to give me 143. So 221 on the left. And when I do 78, plus 143, that gives me 221. So on both sides of the equal sign, I ended up with 221. That means that our answer is correct. We're very happy with that, so we're going to move on to the next one. All right, our next problem. Now, this is one where I have an x on the left and the right, so I can cancel either one. It doesn't matter. I've been telling you that I like to cancel the one on the right usually and bring it over to the left side which I do, you know, I do that most of the time. However, you don't have to. You can cancel the one on the left and move it over here if you want. So I'm gonna do this one that way just to show you that it's still gonna work out, right? And I could do it one way and you could do it the other way and we're gonna get the exact same answer, it doesn't matter. So if I subtract X on both sides, I'm gonna be left with 12 on the left side and on the right side, I'm gonna have seven X plus 47. From here, I'm going to do my two-step equation. So I'm going to subtract 47 from each side. And that's going to leave me with a negative 35 on the left side and a 7x on the right side. And then I'm going to divide each side by 7. And that's going to leave me with x equals negative 5. So I'm going to take this value, right, negative 5, and I'm going to replace it into my original equation in both places where I see that x. So on the left side, I'm going to have negative 5 plus 12. And on the right side, I'm going to have 8 times negative 5 plus 47. Five, negative 5 plus 12 is just positive 7, right? So that side was easy. This next side, I have 8 times negative 5, which is negative 40 plus 47. Okay, I've got 7 on the left still, and a negative 40 plus a positive 47 is a positive 7. So once again, we have the same number on both sides. If this side had been a 7 and this side had been a 5, then we know that we made a mistake somewhere. Right? It has to be the same exact answer. All right, rolling right along here, let's do the next one. So we have x minus 32 on the left side equals 1 half x minus 10 on the right side. First thing I'm going to do is put a 1 in front of this x because that coefficient is 1 even though we don't write it. I'm going to start out by getting my variables together, so I'm going to subtract a half x from each side. Now, when I do 1 minus a half, that gives me a half x. And I like to write my fractions as decimals when I can. A half is 0.5, so I I just prefer working with decimals, right? And it doesn't matter, it's the same value. If you wanted to keep that as 1 half x, like a fraction, that's fine too. Two-step equation, I'm gonna add 32 on each side. So that's gonna leave me with 0.5x on the left side equals, and on the right side, I've got 22 now. Now I'm gonna divide each side by 0.5. And when I do 22 divided by 0.5, that's going to give me 44. All right, let's check this 44 and see how we are doing. On the left side, I've got 1x, right? That's just 44 minus 32. 
And then on the right side, I have a half of x, so a half times 44 minus 10. 44 minus 32 is 12. And on the right, half of 44 is 22 minus 10. Well, 22 minus 10 does equal 12, so we end up with 12 equals 12. Both sides are the same, so we have the correct answer again. All right, our last example, here we go. Now this has a little bit of an extra step. Look at this. We have some like terms over here. So I'm gonna start out by adding the 2x and the 3x together before I do anything else, and that's gonna be 5x minus 8 equals 2x minus 29. I'm gonna get these variables together. So I'm gonna subtract 2x from each side. 5x minus 2x is 3x minus 8 equals negative 29, right? Be careful. When these x's cancel out, this negative sign sticks with my 29. It comes down as negative 29. Two-stepper, add 8 on each side. And that's going to give me 3x equals negative 21. And then I divide by 3. And I'm going to end up with x equals negative 7. As always, though, I'm going to check to make sure that my answer is correct. So I'm going to take my original equation, and everywhere I see an x, I'm going to put a negative 7. So I have 2 times negative 7 minus 8 plus 3 times negative 7 on the left. And on the right, I've got 2 times negative 7 minus 29. 2 times negative 7 is negative 14. Bring down that minus 8. 3 times negative 7 is negative 21 equals. And on the right side, 2 times negative 7 is negative 14 minus 29. All right, negative 14 minus 8 is negative 22. And negative 22 minus 21 is negative 43. On this side, negative 14 minus 29 is negative 43. So we ended up with the same number on both sides of the equal sign, which means that once again, we have the correct answer. Hopefully you're feeling good about solving equations that have variables on both sides. If you need to go back and watch the video again, feel free. And if you still need help, you can reach out to a classmate. And of course, you can always ask your teacher. I'll see you guys next time.